Hello, hello, welcome to Quackalope. Thank you for being here. Today, we're going to be giving you an overview, a breakdown of The Weather Machine by Vitell Lacerda with artwork by Ian O'Toole, published by Eagle Griffin Games. This is a famous combination and lineup for a title following on the heels of some remarkable games that are heavy, that are insanely ambitious, and that have taken the industry by storm. This is probably one of the most notable collaborations in the board game space, which is why you should be paying attention here. If you like heavy, aggressive Euro games, you've loved games like On Mars, Kanban EV, and Venus, and you're curious as to what Vitella Serta has in store for you, I'm gonna do everything I can to break down exactly what this game is. It is a worker placement, Euro-style game with a ton of in-game and end-game point scoring, a little bit of variability in your personal objectives, and a lot of heavy, crunchy resource management. So if that strikes your fancy, stay tuned as we break down everything you need to know before you back. This is a video series that we've started doing on every campaign we cover here on Quackalope. We are going to, well, establish why you should be interested, which is what we just did, announce any disclosures, go through an overview of the game, analyze the theme, talk about the core mechanics and how the game implements and utilizes them where they might be different or unique. Then we're gonna talk about the best and worst elements of the title. And then finally, we're going to talk about changes that I personally would like to see, be, see made either in the campaign or before it reaches you, the audience. With that being said, I think it's it's time to dive in, and this is actually going to be an insanely hard one for me to cover. I, I'm gonna be honest, I still feel like I need many more plays before I fully understand the depths and strategy of everything happening here in the Weather Machine. This follows on the heels of games like On Mars, which I think is maybe a little bit heavier than this one, but the amount of uh, programming in a way, resource management that leads to an escalating decision point where you can look back two or three turns and go, why didn't I take a gear or a resource that I needed? Why didn't I invest robots in a certain area that would have resulted in me scoring multiple points? I, I still don't feel fully equipped to cover this. A and yet the game is remarkable. It is heavy and aggressive, but remarkable. So I'm going to do my very best. As far as disclosures go, I have none to share. I have no active relationship with Eagle Griffin Games and have never done any paid or sponsored work with them. This is a prototype that they sent me, so we are not working with a final copy of the title. And with that, let's sit down and I'll do my best to give you an overview of the weather machine. So. I'm not going to give you a how to play or a breakdown of everything happening here. In fact, if you're curious, I would encourage you to swing over and watch before you play. Monique and Naveen do a really good job giving you a teach of the game. It's about 20 minutes long and then a full gameplay where they also share their thoughts at the very end. Instead, I want to give you maybe a breakdown of what it feels like to play the game. But I will start with a spin through all of the modules. So the core concept of this game is going to be taking actions on the board that result in you either gaining or losing resources, spending those resources to build prototypes, invest in the government, or run the current weather machine to do your best to score points. The main objective and how you win is by scoring the most points possible. Points will come from a variety of sources and really it is a efficiency manager in a lot of ways. You'll score points from running and uh, actively successfully building prototypes. You'll score points for having robots or robots over here that are invested in the, uh, the engine that's being run with the new weather machine or the government's own personal machines. You'll score points by having uh, variable points or variable objectives that every player drafts at the beginning of the game. You'll score points from well, nearly every function and aspect of this. Let's break down the different zones we're working with. We're each gonna start with our own personalized player board. This is where the resource management is going to be functioning on your game table. 
Over here on the side, you're going to be able to collect a variety of different tokens from the government, which will just give you in-game bonuses that you can flip and spend and use as resources that are accessible to you. You'll have a row of robots here with some restrictions on where and how you can build them, but for the most part, what you need to know is that the economy of robots is one of the central parts of this title. You'll need robots to go over here to the new weather machine to have them actively injecting ingredients into the functionality and building prototypes. You'll need robots to trigger and activate the current weather machine so you can publish research and get more information about the way it's wreaking havoc on the world. And you'll spend robots over here in the government zone along with cogs or gears in order to help the government run their machines or take a piece of the pie. You'll get some kickbacks along the way that you might need as you do your best to become a famous scientist and also save the world. These robots are a really tight economy. As you build them, you'll be placing them over here on the other part of your board. This is going to be your own laboratory, which you can expand from this zone down here. All of these tiles have different locations and symbols on them that allow you to store different types of resources. You have cogs, you have chemicals, and you have robot zones. Along with that, the connection points on these tiles allow you to score a multitude of other types of things. Like if I connected both of these green, I would be able to go ahead and store a green chemical in that space. For the most part, you're going to be expanding your laboratory to allow you to do things like turn cogs in for prototypes that you're constructing and also store and harbor the extra resources that you're getting back. There's a really tight economy. How big your laboratory gets is gonna determine how efficient and effective you can be at different zones on the board. Towards the center here is going to be a combination of the resources, the objectives, and the papers that you're publishing. So first, the resources up here are going to be what you're spending to take your actions. These are going to be the costs, right? You have your supply, you have your science, and then you have your three different zones. Now each of these correspond to the same colored zones on the board, the government, the weather machine, and the new prototype. Down here is going to be your special objectives. These objectives are going to be drafted at the beginning of the game and you will have to take time to slot them into place. But as you do so, you'll also get bonuses for each location that you place an objective on. You could also spend these objectives for some other in-game bonuses and to take whatever rewards you have from your various tracks up there at the top of the board. And then finally, this is going to be where you're slotting your research in order to publish official papers or scientific studies on what the weather machine is doing and how we can correct it. The research that you'll be gaining will come from each of these different zones. You can see the various colors here from green to pink to blue, and these will have corresponding areas that sometimes have special effects, but for the most part are just going to be empty zones that you place these tiles down into. You can only collect one per round and you'll slot it accordingly. After you've completed a full set of three, let me go ahead and slot some in, you will then be able to take an action to publish that paper cycle this down, gain whatever benefit you just crossed over in the corresponding row, and then you'll be able to utilize this research to build a prototype or gain a benefit from various weather conditions on the board. That's your player board. This is a shifting puzzle of tracks and resources and dials that you're constantly spinning to influence other ones. It feels like a giant sort of aviation craft, right? You're pulling up at the same time you're pressing two buttons here to start the engines and making sure that the left wing is tilted at the right angle so you can land appropriately. Moving on to the main board here, we're going to have four major zones, four things that you should be paying attention to. Down here is going to be the area where you're going to gain resources and upgrade. It's where you can build robots, gain the chemicals that you're looking for, and expand your laboratory. It's also where you determine your position, how fast you're moving on the track, so you can change player order only ever down in this location. Now, this location you're going to start off the game in, and you'll probably only return to it once or twice over the course of a game. It doesn't feel good to go to because it's not where a lot of major things happen. It's where you get prepared for the next three or four turns you wanna take. Up here is going to be your government building. Your government building is going to be where they try to get their fingers into a slice of the pie. They see the weather machine active, and they, I'm not sure if they're really invested in solving the problem, 
but they're certainly invested in being part of the conversation. Here, you'll be able to take actions to get different chips that you can place down on the side of your board. These, like I said earlier, will allow you to turn over to gain the immediate benefit or resource. And along with that, you're also going to be building a machine. You'll be placing corresponding robots in the colored cogs area and then placing the corresponding cogs from your laboratory up into this zone. So for instance, if I had a robot available, I would place it here in the red zone. If I had a red cog available as well over here on my player board, I would then swap it with a tile and I would place the cog down. The government is constantly going to be trying to run its own machine and once you have three cogs in a column filled up, you're going to be running their machine where they move their dial over here into the current weather effects and potentially help you solve some problems. Maybe, potentially. Over here is going to be the current weather machine, the thing that has started and messed up everything happening in this game. This is where you're still going to have the mad robot scientist running around and doing its best to, well, run weather experiments, and you're going to be using your own robots and your own scientists to gain information and research, and also report back to the government on what's happening here at the weather machine. See, the weather machine is messing things up, and it's going to continue to do that throughout the course of the game. These are going to be the prescriptions that you're trying to run, what people have asked for when it comes to controlling the weather. If an area, a column, is filled with robots, either the uh, kind of AI player character robots or your own personal robots, and there's a corresponding column above it. For instance, this wind location is tied to that wind effect, then you're going to run the weather. This weather will have a resulting amount of victory points and benefits if you're involved in its creation. You'll also potentially, go, you're also potentially going to be able to publish papers here and report back to the government on the research that you've conducted in this zone. When a weather event here happens, however, we're going to move over into our weather and the new weather machine. You see, each one of these tiles will start to escalate depending on what has happened over here. Everything has an action and reaction in this game. For instance, if we ram this wind, then this wind tile for number two would come out onto the board. And as you escalate from number one to number two, the price you have to pay to solve that problem is going to get higher. And some of the rewards might also be increased as well, since you'll gain fame and status for solving various problems over here on the table. So this is where you impress the government and where you do your very best to gain knowledge and gain research. Moving all the way over here is going to be the new weather machine. The new weather machine is going to be where you do your very best to become famous to the populace. You're building prototypes here to solve the problems that the weather machine and the government have created. Over here, you're going to be doing your very best to install robots on various locations, some of which that have or carry chemicals with them to allow you to run and generate a prototype. When you're able to take an action over here to generate a prototype, you'll solve a tile and get the resulting victory points, depending on how many active robots and resources you contribute. The interesting puzzle here is that you need to contribute a certain number of cogs. Look at this location that we just placed out with the wind. We need a green cog for that, two white cogs, and then a blue cog. If I had robots in some of these locations, that would potentially offset the number of cogs that I need to contribute. And if my uh, friend or opponent had robots in some of these locations, they could also offset my cost, but I'd be giving them victory points at the same time. So there's a push and shove. How much do you wanna give them versus how much do you wanna take for themselves? Now I could still pay that cost myself, but only if I have it. How do I pay that cost when I build a prototype and run a solution? Well, I'll do so by having my laboratory built out in a way that I can contain and hold the right number of cogs. Let me show you an example of this real quick and I'll grab a few of these tiles. So we're looking for ones that can hold and we will go ahead and place a few out here. So let's say I had four locations on my board that could hold cogs and I was trying to build this location here. I might have already placed down two white cogs onto my board and 
let's go ahead and do a green. That means I don't have the blue that I'm going to need to contribute, but I can go ahead and utilize my robot to contribute that one and pay all three of these from the same row. That's an important point that you need to pay attention to from the same row in order to complete, solve, gain a benefit or gain, gain a little bit of fame for myself, which is sort of a wild research token over here and well score victory points and continue with the game. The game's going to continue like this for a series of rounds until one of variable end game conditions trigger. Either all of the government's robots are constructed, all of their prototypes are constructed, all of these zones have been filled in with your own personal robots, the uh, machine here, or the uh, Nobel Peace Prize, has been taken by one of your players, which you get by completing three different prototypes yourself, which is fairly hard to do, and or the last tile over here in the weather machine's concoction comes out, meaning you've ran out of time and sort of the world is either fixed or chaotic, but you don't have any longer to figure it out. That's the overview or structure of the game, and man, there's a lot to balance here. The overall feeling or overall impression of the game that you're going to have is a decision point of balancing the resources, planning two or three turns ahead, and hoping nothing drastically messes up your gameplay or your strategy. There's actually not a lot of actions that you're taking on the board. Every location has a few different worker spots. You can go to one of four locations to gain resources, interact with the government, test your research, and build prototypes. And depending on who is already on these locations, you may or may not gain bonuses or benefits from them being there. Along with that, depending on where you place yourself on each of these tracks, you may be able to take multiple actions from each side of these locations, or you may be restricted to one or two. Now, some of these are more advanced actions that you probably won't be doing until the mid to late rounds of the game, but then these double locations become insanely valuable if you're able to accomplish them well, when you go there. Along with that, we're going to have a time marker moving around the board, which is going to be our good doctor here. He is slowly going to progress. He fills up a space, gives you a benefit as if another player was there when you go to that location. Also gives you science researches, because I guess you get to spend a little bit of time from him and gain on some of his knowledge. And as he moves around the board, if he ever, come down, if he ever comes down here into this number five space, you're going to end up gaining benefits based off of the robots you've constructed. It's a reward for doing good work, I suppose. So I think that's an overview. I hope that was clear. There really is a ton happening here. And for me, the next question is going to be the theme. One of the things that Ian O'Toole and Vitella Serta are known for in their series of games are rich thematic experiences that actually tie Euro mechanics into a heavy thematic puzzle really well. And you combine that with the immaculate artwork on the board here, and you have yourself a real threat. I do have a little bit of flavor text that I want to take the time to read because, well, that is what we like to do here on Quackalope. Natural disasters will soon be a thing of the past, proclaimed Professor Sinai Lativ, Project Chief of the Meteorological Manipulation and Lightning Technologies. Tests of his new invention, the weather machine, showed positive results. Visions of quelling floods, subduing cyclones, and ending droughts made him smile. In Weather Machine, you are a scientist on Professor Latif's team, tampering with the control of local weather, adjusting rainfalls for farms, maintaining wind and clear skies for ecological energy sources, and tweaking the temperature for resorts or sporting events. The prototype is quite effective so far. However, a pattern has emerged, revealing a worrying side effect. Each use of the weather machine also alters the conditions elsewhere on the planet, a butterfly effect. Professor Latif's dreams of eliminating climate catastrophes quickly evolve into nightmares of ending humankind. Each test causes worse side effects. One day, the professor bursts into the lab with a resolve in his eye, followed immediately by stone-faced stoics in suits. Government officials have accepted the urgent nature of the situation, as well as the fact that only Professor Latif's team might fix the very problem he has stirred up. We must build a new prototype, he announces as the agents shoot him sidelong glances. But this time, we're going to get it right. The agents silently give a single crisp nod of confirmation. The government is funding this, and we will succeed. 
As Professor Latif explains the plan, the need to secure supplies for sufficient, sufficient bots and chemicals is clear. In addition to the materials, time is of the essence. You must be focused and efficient to have a hope of reining in the growing global terror. Earth's atmosphere, before conditions are too harsh for Homo sapiens and countless other species of all biomes. At this point, Professor Sinai Latif will be remembered as a mad but brilliant scientist for as long as humanity survives. But you could go down in history as the savior of the world. So, the theme and the idea and the character in this game is amazing. The artwork is maybe one of the best pieces of work that I've seen come from Eno Tool. I love how thematic and rich it is and the amount of detail placed into every tuck and crevice from, and I just have to show this to you, these locations here, as wind starts picking up, start increasing in destruction and terror, and every location is similar in that form. I love the prog progression here on the table. But I have to be honest, the game is so heavy when it comes to the, well, resource management and worker placement principles, the Euro engine that you're playing, that the theme in some ways gets a little clouded or lost in the mix. I don't necessarily feel like I'm a mad scientist running around helter skelter, although I do have to be efficient in particular with what I'm doing, I feel like I'm managing resources, running a puzzle, and the theme's lovely, but it doesn't necessarily change or impact my love of the game or my experience with the game. I don't know if there's a fantastic way to make the theme come out stronger. It is sort of a, a crux point for me, and I don't know if I see one here. There's a lot of things that make sense. Uh, from the research, research that you're spending, the type of resources that you have, the papers that you're publishing, the robots that you're building and slotting into zones, and the fact that you need to use what you have and the resources you have available to be as efficient as possible. I actually really like the theme, and I think things tie together well. I think I can understand the purpose for every action that I'm taking. Nothing feels off kilter when you apply the mechanics to the thematic integration. But outside of that, I don't feel like I'm playing anything other than a really, really solid worker placement and resource management puzzle. So you'll have to determine to yourself, does the artwork and aesthetic and theme alone make this enough for you? Or is the fact that it kind of remains its own ambient puzzle with a really cool aesthetic placed on top something that doesn't quite make it match up for you. I'd say something like On Mars feels much more thematic to me uh, for the purpose that the drift between going into space, bringing resources down, slamming into the planet, having a robot that's building and manufacturing things, all of that feels like it integrates the mechanics of the theme a little bit more efficiently and a little bit more cleanly than the weather machine does at the moment. But that being said, this is chaos, and it is a lot of fun. I would say this matches up a lot more closely to Kanban EV in terms of thematic integration tied to the experience of the game. That's one where I felt like the theme was there uh, and was essential to understanding how the game operated, but didn't necessarily change the experience uh, or the nature of the experience. So that's the thematic overview and thematic inter integration. Let's talk about some of the core mechanics. And the core mechanics for me, I believe, are going to be worker placement and resource management. There's some other things happening here, but those are the core efficiency puzzles that you're doing your very best to solve. When it comes to worker placement on the board, it really is fascinating how much you can do with so little and limited spaces. You have four locations you're going to, four locations you're deciding between. We've already been through them. You have the resources you can collect, you have the government buildings where you slowly get bonuses for mid and end game, 
you have the weather machine where you're going to be conducting research, running weather projects, gaining victory points for doing so and publishing papers to report back to the government. And you have the brand new prototype where, you're, where you will be creating and crafting solutions to the problems that the current weather machine is causing. In these locations, however, there are a lot of steps and actions that you're going to be taking. Along with that, every location can be blocked or can be open, depending on who's been there before. And depending on where you go on the track, you'll gain a benefit for everyone else that is currently there, which gives you a few more resources and gives you a nice back and forth. The other important element to note is that every location is going to give you resources for its alternative location, the one next to it, which means that if I want to be able to actively take part in some research or science or publish papers, I'm going to have to go to other locations to get something for the next turn or two that I'm planning. This game is all about planning ahead. It really is. And we'll talk about this more in the resource management element of the game, but the vast majority of what you're doing is looking at two or three locations and determining where you're going to go next, how fast you're going to drive the professor forward on his own track, and where or what bonuses you're going to be able to take with what you have left in your reserves to manage. You're gonna avoid going to this bottom worker location as much as possible because you're going to stockpile when you go there, getting robots, resources, and cogs, and then do your best to spread them out and gain bonuses as you do so up here in the top. And part of this puzzle is going to be a timing puzzle as well. You see, the robots that you're placing out in a way act as their own units or workers. From time to time, you'll get them back onto your board, but for the most part, when you place them, they're going to stay there for a little while. Placing robots here will, will invest them in the government's project, meaning you've lost them. Placing robots here will tie them up for a turn or two until one of these weather machines actually functions and runs. And placing them here will give you in-game or end-game victory points, but you are sacrificing them to the new prototypes, meaning that if no one runs or continually runs and solves problems for the weather that you've committed to, you're not gonna gain as many benefits for that. So, worker placement. This is a complicated worker placement game. I found that I really did need the help of our handy reference guide here to walk through the iconography that is built into this system. You see, when you go to each location, you have the right and left side that you could resolve. And depending on where you go in your worker placement zone, you might be able to resolve one or both of those locations. And every location has anywhere from three to four or five steps. I believe. Yeah, this location here has a total of five different steps you're taking the moment you go there, meaning you have a lot of stuff you need to have managed and had prepped in order to be in that spot. Swinging over here to this first location, this is where you're going to be starting to get tiles from here and placing cogs into the government's machine. When you go there, you'll move up on your resource track. Every corresponding location will actually move you up on the resource track and give you resources from its alternative. Along with that, you'll go ahead and place down a robot, uh, take a tile onto your board that has not been flipped already, and gain one of these research or one of these notations that you can slot into your board. If you do the right side here, you're going to actually take a benefit from the corresponding row and column of one of these tiles that you flip over there immediately on the board. So, there's a give and take, and you might be able to do multiple actions depending on what you have available. Over here, you're going to be able to gain the benefit of placing a robot down into a corresponding zone, paying the resource necessary for them to go there, and then hoping that you gain victory points and can resolve and gain research from this mad scientist or this mad robot running an experiment and functioning the weather machine. You'll be competing for these zones and be competing for what is coming out next. The quicker you can gain research, the quicker you can place robots into these slots, the better and more efficient, the faster you're going to be able to score points and you'll be able to take part in the bonuses that these tiles give you. This alternative location here is actually going to allow you to publish the paper, which is going to be down here on your main player board. If you go here and you're able to take this action, you need all three of your locations, you'll slide your dial to the side, getting the in-game bonus, which is a major part of the game. The earlier in the game that you can do this, the better off you're going to be, because it opens up access to 
to taking actions like this one over here in the prototype. You'll gain those victory points, you'll gain one of these resource tokens, and you'll unlock, well, one of your benefits or bonuses. Over here in this location, this is where you're going to be slotting your uh, robots into different zones where you'll gain victory points for them running and operating your prototype, or you'll actually be running and building a prototype where you solve for one of these problems that have been created in the world. You need to have the corresponding token in order to do so, and or you might place a token down onto one of these to gain a immediate effect or immediate benefit. That's the worker placement. And I feel like I'm not describing it well, but there's a lot that you're doing. And it ties so essentially to the resource management, which is the other thing I, I wanna talk about. This puzzle is one where I was constantly asking and rethinking what I wanted and needed to do. And the reason why I feel, still feel like I need to play more is because I still haven't gotten to a point where I don't second guess or double think myself when I'm taking an action. I don't see two or three different routes or run into a decision point where it just blows my mind how I missed or didn't see the obvious, that I needed a blue cog or should have placed a robot in or needed to have a robot that cycle because the prototype was about to run, but when that happened, I didn't have the science I needed to spend to get the benefit. Yeah, there's a lot here. There's a lot of different resources you're managing. Your robots are going to be one of your tightest efficiency puzzles because you spend them when you place them. You're going to potentially be losing them. You, you have this ebb and flow and they give you benefits as you build them, but it becomes harder and harder to actually get them constructed and they cost quite a lot to build. So the push and pull between how many you wanna actually have constructed versus where you're utilizing them is really rough. Along with that, these tracks here that mark the different types of resources you have, they're gonna go up and f up and down depending on what locations you've gone to, which is great, but you also find that you're spending these very quickly. Now there is a trade that you can conduct. Uh, this little icon here shows that you could spend a certain number of resources for a wild science to switch out cogs or to change resources, but that's only if you've really, really been poor at managing what you have. It's sort of like a saving grace. Yeah, you ran into a problem, but here's a solution for you type of action. For the most part, you're going to be honing these down to the very wire. You can't collect more than what you have. So politically, you'll only ever be able to have a maximum of three. And if you start gaining bonuses that give you more political points, you're gonna be in a problem because that's wasted resources that you could be or should be utilizing. This is a really, really tight amount of resources that you can get and seeing some pass by means that you're playing the game wrong. You should be using and have a point for every resource you have here on the track. And then the escalating amount of resources that you get is really great as well, but you're going to be following and keeping an eye on a lot of different iconography here on the board. From the bonus tokens that might generate or give you things like robots, resources, chemicals, cogs, to robots that when the professor passes this zone here will generate a whole slew of extra resources for you. But like I said, if you don't have space to store them, then you're screwing yourself out of some available points all the way down to actually conducting and publishing research. Some of these locations will give you immediate bonuses like extra supplies, but again, if you can't store them or you can't take the effect, you need to be as efficient as possible with every single action that you take. And then finally, you have a little bit of a puzzle when it comes to resource management, which is sort of another fascinating twist and take on this game. You see, these laboratory locations will allow you to expand and build. You're gonna be getting more cogs, adding more resources, getting more chemicals, but you have to decide if you wanna go long, which will allow you to have more cogs to contribute to a prototype, or if you wanna build in a way that allows you to store more chemicals. You need chemicals to go and slot in robots in different locations to spend on uh, different uh, weather machine actions that you're taking. And so you really have to decide because once you've placed tiles down in here, you cannot move them. You can always manipulate and rearrange your puzzle of resources, but the tiles themselves, the laboratory yourself, it doesn't ever adjust. This game is a incredibly heavy puzzle that requires thought a few turns ahead in order to fully engage and, well, build the strategy. 
Moving down to the best and the worst parts of the game. For me, the best part of the game is the moment when you actually get to publish research or build a prototype and solve for this efficiency puzzle that you've been running. It feels insanely rewarding to have just the right amount of robots, cogs, and chemicals, and supplies available to seek out and build something that solves a solution up here. You score an immense amount of points, and watching that number jump 19 points in a single round is really, really fun. Along with that, this is a crunchy head-scratcher. If you like Vitella Serta games, this is following right in line with a lot of those. It's maybe not as complex as on Mars, but definitely is functioning around the same weight and capacity as Kanban EB EV for me. And the feeling of the game is actually very similar in some regards. We still have a worker that's kind of moving around the track, and managing resources and placing your workers becomes a really crunchy push and pull. However, here, you're going to be slotting people into zones and taking large single actions as opposed to a multitude of actions that get programmed into the game. I really, really love the artwork and theme of this game as well. I said that the thematic integration was not heavy, but for me, the artwork more than makes up for the experience of it. And all the mechanics do make sense in accordance with the theme, I just think they take more weight or more priority than the theme does when you play. Along with that, this game has a ton of levers and dials for you to mess with. From sliding and slotting tokens, gaining resources, unlocking zones that give you bonuses based off of robots, if you enjoy or like the experience like I do of placing and getting a reward or watching something that you've built up in turn one, two, and three pay off in turn five, six, and seven, this is really, really ripe and full of that. You'll see a escalating consequence or an ex-escalating reward for the hard work that you've done across the course of the game. Now, the stuff that I don't like, the, the worst parts of the weather machine. For me, the worst part of the weather machine is going to go right alongside what I just talked about. The future planning, the programming, the thinking through every minute piece and resource that you have. There's a lot to manage here, and at times, currently, the amount of min-maxing and resource management for this efficiency puzzle sometimes feels quite overwhelming. I'm getting resources from a variety of locations. I have a ton of options that I can take, but that also leads to an intense amount of AP and rethinking or double-thinking the actions that you've taken. It's not unfamiliar in Vitella Serta games, but it is something that this one emphasizes. Along with that, I do honestly still find these locations, while simple and straightforward, complex and weighty to go to. I need this little player aid and guide to understand and work my way through them, and I still find myself missing things that I need or have to do when I go to every location. The board does a good job at walking you through, but when you have five or six steps when you're going to a zone, and you're potentially even taking a bonus for who else has been there or immediately taking both actions that are available, there's a lot of of stuff to do on your turn, and all that stuff can turn into a bogged down player experience. Along with that, I have heard that this plays best at higher player counts, specifically from Monique Naveen's video. I personally have only experienced it here at two players, and so I'm looking forward at playing it at higher player counts. I think the pressure on the board and the interaction with these tracks is apparently supposed to be higher and a little bit more interesting. Right now at two players, I think it's a really, really fascinating puzzle but the interplay between players at the table is not uh, maybe as high as I would like. Along with that though, I am intimidated at getting up to super higher player counts because I do find that depending on who you're playing with, the amount of turn AP that you could run into can be extremely high. Finally, the last thing I wanna talk about, something that I like but some players may not like, is going to be these tiles. At the beginning of the game, you actually get to draft what objectives you're going for, which I really like. If you understand the game, it gives you a puzzle to solve and actually changes up the nature of the game a little bit. You see, the experience of the game isn't vastly different from game to game, but these tiles at least give you other objectives or other puzzles to solve for, and so you can decide if you want to spend most of your time on the government builder, or if you really want to go for the Nobel Peace Prize, or drive in game by building prototypes. And and depending on where you focused, it'll result in where you're able to gain your score, what benefits and bonuses you're able to get at the end of the game. I really like these, actually. 
they let me start programming what I want to do and the type of game I want to play from turn one. But if you're not someone that likes end game objectives that are different for every player or you feel maybe like it's hard for you to keep track of what other players have and what other players are going for, this may be a hit or miss for you. For me, it lets me start thinking the whole game ahead. For some people, it might lead to a disappointing end game where you thought you were doing really good by scoring points during the course of the game, but you didn't realize that someone was going to score a total of 15 or 20 points at the end of the game because they'd pre-programmed and planned around their personal objectives. It typically isn't enough to crush, but if you're not paying attention to it and if you drafted or picked the wrong tiles, then it just might not work for you. Now, drafting is a variant, which I should mention. Personally, I think I'm always gonna play with it, but I could see why some people might wanna randomize, randomize the tiles they get and experience the game, especially from the very beginning, with a open-ended type of randomization. With that being said, I think that is everything except stuff that I would like to see changed. And this is a section that I usually have a lot of thoughts around. And I don't know that I do. This game is really tight. It is insanely clean. And I don't know that there's a lot more that I want or need when it comes to the experience of the game. The question for me is what might or what would make it better for me? We have really great player aids here that actually walk you through reference guides for every tile, every location, and full text on what all the iconography means. I do find that I need these during the course of the game, but they'd be something that I'd ask for if they weren't here in the prototype, and they're already here, and they're already produced, and they're already really good. Yeah, I gotta be honest. I think the only thing that I might ask for or be interested in, and this is just me being selfish or weird, is more of these weather tiles. I love the way that they interact with the game and I like watching the weather escalate and twist and turn. I personally would love to have a few more of these pieces of artwork that maybe have different conditions, different scoring objectives or different benefits on them. I like the fact that it feels like you're wrecking havoc on the world, and this is really the only area where you get a picture of that. It would be interesting to see more of those. What are the consequences of us meddling with the weather, and what are we doing to solve or fix that? Outside of that, this is such a clean puzzle, and it would behoove me to give feedback or criticism around a Vitella Serta game. There's things that are right for me or aren't right for me, but I don't know that I want to see any of them changed between this game, where it is now, and what you're actually going to get into your hands. I'd like more. I'd like more modules. I'm really interested to see what the solo option, kind of what the functionality of the solo game is going to be. Uh, I always find that those are sometimes not the best for me because they become such an economic puzzle that I don't feel like I'm playing a thematic game which I'm not, which I understand. And I'd like more artwork. I'd like more tiles. I'd like to feel like I could see the world uh, and the consequences of our actions. Outside of that, that's it. So thank you for watching. Please leave a comment down below if you have any more questions or if you're excited to see a gameplay. We're hopefully gonna be getting this to the table in front of the camera one day soon. I need to swing over to Board Game Co's house and hang out and play this with him because he hasn't had a chance to check it out yet. And uh, with that, whatever the case, whatever you do, remember to do the important thing. Get out and play some games. We'll see you next time. Thank you.